Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at the ES Play micro board from MakerFabs. This is an open source handheld game console based around the popular ESP32 system on a chip. And before I go over the hardware itself, let's go ahead and boot it up as is to see what it looks like right out of the box. It comes with an SD card loaded with a few games and a micro USB cable for supplying power. The only thing you'll need is an actual source of power. I'll be using this portable power bank, but anything that can supply power over USB should work. So all you need to do is plug the USB cable in and flip this switch. And there you go. The screen is a 320 by 240 ILI 9341, which is a pretty common peripheral for devices like these. And the viewing angle is not bad at all. The default firmware is really nice. It reminds me of RetroPie, where you can navigate through the different emulator systems. It's got a menu with some basic options like volume and brightness and scaling. So once you click on an emulator, it lists the games that you have for it. These are stored on that micro SD card, and it came with all of these pre-installed. I'll go ahead and give Super Mario a try. And it loads really quickly, which I think is pretty cool since we're emulating a Nintendo system on an ESP32. Everything plays nicely. I can't detect any real difference between this and an emulator running on a Raspberry Pi or something. The responsiveness is good, it doesn't feel sluggish or anything. In person, it looks a lot better than through the camera. Screens like this just never show up right on camera. But in person, there is no noticeable flicker and the color looks great. So if you press the menu button, you get this in-game menu which is how you can exit the game back to the launcher screen. It doesn't have built-in speakers, but it does have a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So I'll go ahead and plug that into my laptop to record the sound directly. And to test it out, let's try this Snow Brother game. The board has a digital to analog chip for handling audio, and I think it sounds pretty good, especially for emulators like this, but we'll also see how it plays MP3s here in a bit. Oh, and you don't have to power it over micro USB. There's also a LiPo battery attachment, and the board even has an integrated charging circuit so you can see how much charge the battery has. And if you plug in the USB cable, it'll charge the battery too. While the default firmware looks great, and it'll be fine if all you wanna do is play some retro games, it's also really easy to update the firmware. You hold down B and power it up. Well, that's what the documentation says. On my board, you actually hold down menu and power it up. Then you get to this little bootloader screen. And this is really cool because it lets you update the firmware directly from the SD card. It comes with these two by default, the normal retro emulator, and then there's this MP3 player. So I'll go ahead and flash that to the board. The bootloader does everything for you. Once that's done, it reboots, and then you have an MP3 player. The SD card came with one MP3 on it called Catch My Breath. I don't want to play that audio in this video because I don't know about the copyright issues, but let's take this SD card out and load a royalty-free song on it. So this is what the directory structure of the SD card looks like. Here's where the firmware files go. If you want to add new firmware, you just drop it in there. Here's where all of the game ROMs go. And then here, obviously, is where all of your MP3s go. I'll just paste this royalty-free song here, and then put that SD card back in the ES Play Micro. Plug the audio cable back in, and give it a boot. It's 
plugged directly into my mic jack, so I had to turn the volume way down, but otherwise it sounds great. The menu button will mute it, and the B button toggles the screen on and off. Pretty cool. Then to get the game emulator back, I just do that whole hold menu and reboot thing. Select the retro emulator, and it flashes it back to the device. Now let's try putting a new ROM on the SD card and see if it plays. To do that, it's just like the MP3. We go here, go to ROMs, I'm adding a Nintendo ROM, so that's NES, paste Castlevania in there, and then put the SD card back in the ES Play Micro. Now on the Nintendo menu, you can see Castlevania as an option. So let's see how it plays. Looks pretty good to me. When it comes to firmware, the default system is open source, and you can get updates for it here. I'll put a link in the description. If you don't want to build from source, and I wouldn't blame you, there are pre-built releases here. So you can just go to the assets of each release, and then there should be a .fw firmware file. Put that on the SD card like before, and it'll update things for you. But since it is open source, I decided to give it a shot at compiling the code and making some changes. Basically, I put my picture on the firmware selection icon. And then the code is basically the default firmware, except the title screen now says Davy was here in green text. Not a major change, but going over the code, it all seemed pretty intuitive, so if there are any details you don't like about the UI or the behavior, you should be able to go in and change it if you know a bit of C programming. In fact, I think these would be a great platform for experimenting with low-level software development because the operating system and drivers for the peripherals are pretty easy to work with, and they don't have all of the complexity and overhead of an entire, you know, modern computer system. So you could entirely reprogram this to be your own homebrew video games. You don't have to use these emulators on there. Or write your own portable media player. Or program it to be an Internet of Things remote for controlling other devices, since it does have Wi-Fi. Basically, it has way more potential than just playing retro video games. And again, the hardware for this is also open source. So if you go here, you can get the PCB board and schematic files so you can learn more about the exact hardware being used. And if you're into that kind of stuff, you can also redesign it and have it printed to make your own version. Or you can use the dimensions to say, design a 3D printed case for it. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Anyway, that's the ES Play Micro. I put links in the description for everything, so Go there, check it out, maybe give this video a like, or let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next time.